Welcome to Law Easy. My name is Marty Shankman. I'm joined by a colleague, Brian Bulk. Welcome, Brian. Thank Brian you. is a uh, insurance consultant advisor. And we're going to talk about another boring insurance topic that's critically important. And I will go so far as to say I am shocked at how many clients I see in my practice that have absolutely not addressed this. And it's amazing because I'll even have physician clients come in that their sole primary motive of coming in is worries about asset protection, but they don't address this common issue. And what is the common issue? Excess liability. Sometimes also called? Umbrella liability. Umbrella. An umbrella because figuratively an umbrella goes over your homeowners and your auto as a higher level of liability. Um, I'm amazed that I see in very wealthy people sometimes a million dollars of coverage. Why? Why? Because... Yes, that was the question. Why, why was the question? Why? Why do, the, why do people have so underinsured what they can? Because with umbrella, I mean, if you have a million dollars, the cost to go from a million to five million or five million to ten million is not significant. It's not significant. Why does this happen almost frequently, commonly? Variety of different reasons. One, people think, okay, I have an excess liability policy. I'm good. Okay. The second... Kind of matters how much. It does. It does. The and all of you watching this, when you get home tonight, look in the drawer and see what the limit is on your policy. The second one is the agent or broker that they're working with may not be as sophisticated or used to working with as sophisticated clients as you that are. That person is, right. Correct. I mean, I have a simple question that I ask clients when I meet them for the first time. If you look at your net worth and you look at your income and then compare it to your excess liability limit, are you comfortable with that relationship? I, I don't think people are looking because the They're numbers not. that I see don't make any sense. They're not. So everybody needs to look at this. And I would suggest for advisors, accountants, attorneys, financial planners, wealth advisors, everybody in the advisory world needs to have this on their short list of questions to ask everybody because I just see it as such a common, um, easily solved liability exposure or risk factor that, that can be addressed for really modest sums. It's it's nominal. I mean, I... I had a client that was that was brought to me. He had a million dollars of excess liability. They were worth about six million dollars. They made about four hundred thousand dollars combined. They were paying two hundred dollars or so for the million dollars. Insignificant. I raised it to ten million dollars. It was eighteen hundred dollars. But eighteen hundred dollars for ten million dollars of right. liability it gives them great when comfort. you own cars and a sailboat and right. right. We, we had a physician client in uh, not so long ago who had a motorcycle. Talk about a potential risk for liability. He had a million dollars of coverage, $10, $12 million net worth. It made no sense. Um, so let me ask you another question. So I guess, to me, the key point to this, everybody needs to take a look at their liability coverage. You don't need to be wealthy to have liability coverage because it's just critical to protect what you have. What do you, how do you determine the right amount? You gave sort of this vague, and maybe that's all there is to do, but maybe there's more you can say on what is the right amount of coverage. And I guess my view of that, which you can critique and even though it's on tape say I'm wrong, is when you look at the numbers, like you said, if somebody's making 400 grand a year to get 10 million of coverage so they don't have to really think about it for $1,800, it's not a significant expense relative to their income. So if the cost of stepping up the coverage is modest relative to what you can afford, it almost seems like the silly answer is, well, just do it kind of like the Nike commercial, just do it. Just do it. But is there any more uh, intelligent thought or analysis about how you come up with the number? We look at a variety of different items. We look at net worth. We look at income. We look at what you do. How likely, in the event of some type of issue, is somebody going to see dollar signs, regardless of what you show on the outside? Okay. So doctor, lawyer, uh, if you own a boat, boats are the biggest liability issue that you oh, can possibly think of. Think of it. It's a wet, slippery, moving surface that there's usually alcohol involved. <laughs> You've had more fun on boats than I. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, we got to look at the numbers of what you have. Um, 
one of the comments that I've seen people suggest, but I think the numbers uh, really respond to that, but let me just ask it. Well, golly, the insurance agent is trying to get me to buy more because they're going to make a commission. I mean, with the numbers that you just gave in the examples we've talked about, I mean, there can't be much commission in this. It's really about protecting the customer, the client, not about what the, the agent is getting. Just any thoughts or comments on that? Umbrella liability or excess liability coverage is basically sleep at night insurance. What makes you feel comfortable? There is no exact science to picking the correct number. For example, I had a, um, a hedge fund owner for $100 million that was very comfortable with $20 million worth of liability. I had a retired bank president worth $35 million that wanted $40 million worth of liability. So there is no exact sign. Both of them were correct because that's what they were comfortable with. Right, right. Okay. And again, relative to their wealth, the, the cost was not significant. No. So anybody that feels the, the consultant is pushing them is probably mistaken and should not be looking at it from that perspective, not on this kind of coverage. Not this particular okay. type of coverage. Question, uninsured motorist, what is it? What do I do about it? Does that relate to the umbrella or is that just a separate form of coverage? What do we need to know about that? Um, uninsured motorist coverage is a part that starts on your automobile policy. Okay, it's called uninsured slash underinsured motorist. It protects you, the driver, in the event that you are in a car accident. It's somebody else's fault, and they either have no insurance or less insurance than you. So they're either uninsured or underinsured compared to how you are. It is an avenue that you can go against to receive money in the event that the other person cannot be financially recouped on. So that really is separate and apart from the umbrella you have. So you need to address that as well. So you have it on your auto policy. Then on your umbrella or excess liability policy, you can buy what's called excess uninsured slash underinsured motorist. So it's a second part of the policy. Um, Many companies will allow you to buy an, another million dollars in coverage. Some companies will allow you to buy more. Let me ask you another question. So one of the things, and I've seen this come up, where somebody had their auto and homeowners with one company or even sometimes two companies and their excess liability with a different company. I found a gap between the policies. They had, I forgot what the number was on the homeowners, but the, let's say it was a half a million, but the umbrella started assuming an underlying one million comment on that? The, pr the problem that many people run into when they have either multiple companies or multiple agents is their insurance is not lined up. Right. Okay. Uh, it's more likely on the auto policy than the homeowners because the, the underlying requirements of the excess liability are relatively low on most homeowners policies. So they have the right coverage. It's the auto. It's the vacation home, which is insured with some other that, agent that's my next out, question. Uh, <laughs> out of the state. Um, that was my next question. So, by the way, I think if you have separate agents, make sure there's a reason why you have separate agents. It's better to be coordinated. If you are going to have separate companies or agents, make sure somebody, whether it's you or somebody else, coordinates it. What about a home? Do you need to specifically list real estate so if I have a home, a vacation home, a piece of raw land, what do I have to do to make sure it's covered by the umbrella? Does that raw land, since it's not personal use yet, do I need a commercial umbrella, or can that be covered under my, my homeowners? Most excess liability policies require you to list not only the location, but the underlying policy, okay, and your cars, and your boat, and your motorcycle, all of those items. There are some companies that don't require that. So every company is different. There's no blanket statement. We on. have to wrap up. So the bottom line on that is if you have separate properties, make sure they're listed, make sure you confirm they're covered. Correct. Okay. I um, hope that discussion of excess or personal uh, umbrella liability was helpful. Uh, please bear in mind that this video clip is the others on the site are all for educational purposes only. Consult with a professional advisor before taking any action. Thank you.